Welcome to the Banfield Report of the 29th of June 2011. My name is Max Banfield. I'm the author of a book and a website called The Posture Theory. Today I'll be talking about the causes of poor posture and spinal deformities. There are numerous ways of treating such problems in adults, but I'll be addressing my comments to parents and teachers with a view to providing information that will be useful in understanding the causes and preventing those problems in children and students. One of the factors to be considered is that the human spine uh, when young is pliable and then towards adulthood uh, it hardens and its shape is uh, not so easily changed. Uh, one of the causes of spinal problems is poor nutrition, in particular deficiencies of calcium and vitamin D in the diet which can result in a condition called rickets. This is an illustration of a child who had rickets, quite extreme, various degrees of rickets. In this case you can see that the spine has collapsed um, because of the weight of the child's own body. Um, this is an example of a child who reached adulthood and you can see the type of physique involved. Another factor which contributes to that problem is uh, viral illnesses, infectious illnesses which um, uh, involve weeks or months of um, uh, poor appetite, nausea and vomiting and weight loss. And the other major factor which contributes to um, spinal deformities is uh, can be compared with the way a gardener um, alters the shape of a tree. He will um, bend the tree into a particular shape and then he will tie a rope around it, stake it to the ground and leave it that way for weeks or months and then it will continue to grow in that manner even after the uh, rope has been uh, cut. And throughout history humans have attempted to train their bodies to grow in particular ways using similar methods. For example in uh, previous centuries uh, there, there was the use of corsets and there, there was a concept of using training corsets to train the way the human body um, grew and to train its shape. This is an illustration uh, of where a family uh, are all wearing, or, or where the children are all wearing corsets, and they are put in corsets as young as uh, four years old, in some cases, and uh, kept in them for uh, 16 hours a day or 24 hours a day sometimes, in other words, day and night. And as you can see, the children of various ages there kept in the same shape corset. Um, one of the effects uh, of um, wearing those corsets for lengthy periods of time is it changes the shape of the ribs. You can see here uh, that the, these ribs are broadly based and these ribs are funnel shaped. Um, this is the shape, the corset becomes the shape of the ribs. And this made, uh, um, this uh, interfered with the uh, the depth of breathing and as a consequence uh, these women were frequently breathless. However, uh, another problem was that uh, when you compress the waist from a normal size down to this size, which is roughly 13 inches, you get your stomach, your liver, your spleen, your kidneys, your spine, your blood vessels and you're crushing them on the insides. and that has a number of effects on health in addition to breathlessness from compressing the lower lungs it also Im impedes the blood flow between the feet and the brain to cause faintness and these women would frequently faint it also caused horrendous problems with indigestion um, also uh, there were studies which showed that the uh, narrow the corset worn on a regular basis the lower the life expectancy a woman who wore 13 inch corsets for example would be expected to have a life expectancy of uh, only 35 years. There were numerous discussions and arguments about this that went on for centuries with some people saying corsets weren't harmful to health and others saying they were. As a result of a lot of studies uh, of anatomy and so forth um, uh, it was established that these corsets were harmful to health, women were convinced and so corsets went out of fashion uh, as a consequence in the early 20th century. 
This is the diagrammatic representation of what was happening to the internal anatomy when women wore corsets. Another aspect uh, of fashion was to consider that various shaped spines were attractive and so there were, the corsets were made with various shapes. Here you can see um, that some of them were uh, had produced an angled spine, some of them produced a curvature in the lower spine and some of them produced a hunchback of the, in the upper spine and a forward curvature in the lower spine. And women will walk into shops and order a, say a 14 inch corset and have their choice of spinal, uh, spinal shapes. These corsets were made out of uh, cloth, leather, metal, had metal strips in them, whalebone, tight lacing and were sometimes laced with force by an assistant and, and uh, those are the factors which contributed to uh, the health problems in the 19th century. Um, and if, if women wore these corsets for long enough their, sh their spine would take on that shape, whatever shape they wore. Um, there are other women who considered the round shoulder physique to be attractive and so they would bind their shoulders to produce the uh, round shouldered appearance and there are some tribal peoples uh, they would distinguish themselves from other tribes by binding their shoulders uh, to produce the hunchback physique and this is uh, an illustration of a hunchback tribesman and that's from a book called Anthropometamorphosis. Now the other effect of uh, um, uh, corsets was of course to those types of corsets was to deform the shape of the spine and when you cut away the skin, this is the type of deformity that you'd see. I'll end my talk there. Um, these ideas are a result of my interest in this subject for more than 30 years. A lot of time and thought has gone into it. A lot of uh, ob detailed observations. Uh, a lot of facts have been considered, including history. And bringing this all together to make the causes of these problems clear and obvious. As such, they are subject to my copyright. You're more than welcome to discuss and write about these ideas, but please acknowledge the source of the information. Having said that, thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it interesting and informative. My next talk will be about other factors related to this topic. Um, my name is Max Banfield, and this has been the Banfield Report of 29th of June 2011.